Hey guys, welcome to Reddit Brew. Today, I will be reading from the r slash entitled people subreddit. So let's jump into it. You're still bi? I thought you grew out of that once we started dating. Entitled mommy breaks up with me for laughing at her son. So, I've been dating this guy for about four months now. He's not my usual type, as he's very naive and sheltered. Whereas my life has been a joyous ride of, how in the name of flapjacks did I survive that BS? But he's nice and funny, so I gave it a shot. We met at uni, and for the most part, it was fun. There were a few red flags, like his mom still irons and folds his undies and socks for him, but let's be real, people in their early 20s still living at home is not even a shocking thing anymore. I just think it's a bit psychotic to iron socks, but hey, that's just me. Anyway, on Saturday, he went out for a lad's night with his friends. He hooks up with a girl, and yesterday she messaged me on Facebook basically saying, sorry, I was drunk and slept with your boyfriend. I had no idea he was in a relationship. I'm so sorry. I was fine with it because monogamy isn't really my thing. Unless we've had a discussion and have agreed to be monogamous, I do not care. I don't tend to sleep with people in general. I have a low sex drive due to pure exhaustion and cancer. So if you want it and I'm not up for it, go get it somewhere else. I truly don't care. Just communicate with me first. Use condoms and don't be with the same person multiple times because there is a difference between casual sex and multiple relationships. Anyway, I thought it was nice for her to reach out and let me know. She's actually really cool. We chatted for a bit and decided to go grab a Costa together on Thursday. I like talking to her and we have a lot in common. This is completely platonic. My boyfriend gets home and I casually mention that his hookup messaged me and we've been talking and I reassure him that I don't mind that he slept with someone else, just would prefer in the future that he wears a condom, and I want him to get tested before we sleep together again. He was fine with all of that, and was really surprised with how well I took it. I had discussed my feelings on monogamy with him before we started dating, so it wasn't a massive shock. I then make an offhanded joke saying, next time you decide to sleep with a cute girl, let me know, and if I'm up for it, maybe we can turn it into a three some. It was said jokingly, and I was 100% joking. He replies with, why would you want to sleep with another girl? This is where the overall stupidity kicks in. I remind him that I'm bisexual, and he says with a really confused face, you're still bi? I thought you'd outgrow that when we started dating. He follows this up with, my mom said you would, because bisexuality is just a phase. I face palmed, like through my hand to my forehead so hard, my butt jiggled from the force of the slap. It was so ridiculously stupid for a 24-year-old male in 21st century Britain to be saying these kinds of things. Like, what in the name of RuPaul do you think sexuality is at 24 years old to believe bisexuality is a phase? I didn't know what to say. I stood looking at him like he just sprouted another head out of his armpit. And may I point out, this guy is studying sociology. A course I did for undergraduate, and know that sexuality and gender are two things very much covered in this sociology course. I was floored. It took me a few minutes to regain my composure, and I realized I had two options. Laugh at the sheer ridiculousness of a 24-year-old male having not only discussed my sexuality with his mom, but had believed her when she told him that I'd grow out of it. Or I could try and explain sexuality to an adult so sociology student. I contemplated hard, and then I laughed so hard my bladder nearly burst. Sorry, not the mature decision, but you know what? I don't care. It was freaking hilarious. He'd said it with such confidence. I can live with his mom ironing his socks, and I can live with his mom still buying his clothes and taking him to get a haircut, because honestly, I have my own shortcomings, and if he can tolerate those, I can tolerate his. But I will not live with someone being so clueless about sexuality. Maybe I'm the entitled one here. Maybe 
the eye have too high of expectations of people. He of course got mad that I laughed at him. He started shouting and I kid you not, he managed to fit, but my mom says, mom said that, and but my mom is, into one 45-ish second monologue seven times. I will do a lot of things for love, but I won't compete with mummy. He grabbed his backpack, called his mom to get him, and left. That night, after chatting with the girl he slept with and laughing some more, his mother sent me this text. I cannot believe you would humiliate my son like that. You selfish, stupid little bitch. You are a fat, ugly slut who is using by Sukes Laity, spelled just like that, as an excuse to hold around. I know your type and you've just thrown away the best thing you'll ever have with my son. My son deserves way better than a fat little slut like you. You are scum. We will be coming tomorrow to get the rest of his things from your house and I will be bringing my brother to deal with you if you try and pull anything. He knows how to deal with trash. If you try and steal anything, I will call the police. You had better be there when we get there scum. So yeah, not only did his mother break up with me for him, she also called me some lovely names. Unfortunately, I couldn't be there when they showed up. I had texted her back asking what time she'd be coming, ignoring everything else, and she didn't respond. No way in Hades was I waiting around all day for this lunatic, her brother, and son to turn up for his laptop, toothbrush, and some random bits of clothes. This brings me to this morning. I'd popped all his stuff in a bag and left it by the door, except his laptop, which was on the table next to the front door, just because I didn't want to break it. I do the school run for my sister every morning. Off we go at 8.20, we drop my gorgeous little nephew off at school at 8.50, and get home for 9.30 having stopped at the shop on the way home. When I arrive, guess who was there waiting outside my front door? If you'd guessed the tantrum trio, you'd be right. If you'd guessed the police, you'd also be right. Most logical people would think, hmm, she's not home. Guess we'll have to wait or come back later. However, entitled mom with serious emotional incest issues? She's not in. We should break into her house. I get there and this witch is handcuffed in the back of a police car. My beautiful double glazed stained glass window pane that had a rose decoration looks as though it's gone three rounds with a rock because it had and my ex's uncle is shouting at the officer that I'm a thief and they were just coming to get what was my ex's. The officer reminds him that even if they were trying to retrieve his property, breaking and entering is still a crime. The police officer then approaches me and says, good morning, miss. This gentleman says you have arranged for them to come collect this young man's possessions this morning. Is that true? I replied with, no, ex's mom sent me this message last night show's phone, and she did not reply with a time. But X knows I do the school run every day, so I'm not sure why they chose now. The officer reads over my phone, calls over his colleague, and they go over to the witch in cuffs. They ask, witch, what did you mean when you told this girl your brother will deal with her? Which starts to babble, brother got very quiet, and X just looked lost. Also, her brother is basically the same height as me, and I have more fat in one butt cheek than he does in his entire body. So, I could definitely take him. I'm just completely bemused at this point. The officers come back over and explain that because she was caught in the act by police of attempts to break into my house, I do not have a choice about pressing charges, but they do ask if I'd like to add harassment and threats to the list. I really don't have the mental capacity right now, so I decline. They then take pictures of the damage. Not that there was much. I give them my ex's stuff so he can leave, and off they go. I'm now 15 stone lighter and getting a little flirty with the girl he slept with on Saturday. What I'm taking away from this relationship? If mummy irons his undies, regardless of age, run. Fast and far, and preferably with a pretty brunette. Hope you enjoyed, and wish me luck for tomorrow tomorrow for my maybe not so platonic Costa with the girl he cheated on me with.
It's crazy how many people out there believe that bisexuality, or sorry, bisexuality is a phase. It seems to be common where bisexual people are sometimes assumed to be either only straight or only gay based on the gender of the person they are currently dating. And I have seen so many instances where someone that's bi or pan gets the, oh, you're straight now remark when they're in a relationship with the opposite sex. I mean, sure, you can be bi or pan and have a strong preference towards one gender. You can also be bi and be in a relationship or married to the opposite sex, but that doesn't mean they're not bi anymore. Anyway, that's my rant about bi -sukshleity. Let's talk about the actual story now. I'm stoked that Karen got arrested and OP got the girl. Justice Week is still in full force. I wish that OP did did charge the witch with the other things that the officer suggested, but it seems like OP has a lot on her plate already, so I totally get not wanting to add another thing on top of that. Still a satisfying story regardless. I really hope OP posts an update about how her date goes. Hi, this is Future Brooke. There is indeed a date update that was just posted. I repeat, there is a date update. I feel like it's only fair to make an update since so many people have reached out and asked to share the absolute train wreck that my Costa date became. As those who read my first thread will remember, I started chatting with the woman my ex cheated on me with and we decided to meet up at Costa on Thursday and spent most of Tuesday and Wednesday chatting. She lived for the psycho mama drama that I got hit with when ex's mummy broke up with me for him after I'd laughed at him for thinking his adequately sized man stick would cure me of my bisexuality. Mother Dearest then attempted to break into my house in the dumbest way possible and got herself some shiny new metal bracelets. Reasons it was dumb you might ask? Well, first of all, something I had forgotten about, X knows the combination to my key safe, so he could have legitimately let himself into my house with a key, got his belongings from the front door, and left. No harm, no foul. Second, next to my front door is an ordinary glass window, the same size as my door. This genius of a woman attacked my door window, which has metal crossings in it, with the rose design, not the window next to it. The delightful gentleman that came to assess my window said that had she attacked the ordinary window instead of the door window, she'd have broken through easily, because the door has reinforced glass. Third, and I only learned about this yesterday, mother of the year took a bite out of a police officer. So, bye bye mommy. See you in five to seven. From what I was told, mommy has earned a nice little ankle bracelet until court. I'm not sure of the exact details, but hey ho, not my circus. So now we'll get to the nitty gritty, the date itself. Everything was fine. She looked beautiful. I looked, well, like me. I got the new arrow caramel hot chocolate, and she got a cappuccino. We are sat down, my back to the door, a few minutes in, and she lets out this adorable little half gasp, half chortle. She's staring behind me, so I whip myself around, and guess who I see? If you guessed the great bi slayer, you'd be right. If you'd guessed Uncle Baguette, you'd also be right. My ex was trying to meet with me, and I stupidly told him that I couldn't because I was meeting with Brunette. And he decided, in his infinite wisdom, to come along and try to reason with me. I look back at date, she's excited, as we had already established that she is a drama whore, and this was already better than Corey. X comes over, and the conversation goes something like this. Hey, can we talk? I don't think we have anything to talk about. We need to talk about us. There is no us. You broke up with me. Well, technically his mother did. Yeah but I'm not controlled by my mother and I should have a say about our relationship. Our relationship is over. Your say became irrelevant when you let your mother attempt to smash my door in. She was only trying to protect him from you stealing his stuff. 
Q eye roll. Look, we both made mistakes. Can't we just go somewhere and talk about this together? No, you can't. She's moved on. And if you don't mind, you're disturbing our date. This is a date? I thought you were just hanging out. B, replying for me. Well, yeah. Turns out your magical penis failed to knock the gay out of me too. So we figured, why not? Thanks for giving me such a glowing recommendation, by the way. I'm a little bit in love with her at this point. I kid you not, she said it in the smuggest voice possible while I tried not to choke on my marshmallows. Not a euphemism. X stammered, stuttered, and just kind of blinked a lot. Like he couldn't believe what he was hearing. Baguette at this point is raging. Like if this was a cartoon, steam would be coming out of his ears. But being the smart little breadstick he is, he kept quiet and threw us a look that Sheldon Cooper would have been envious of. Honestly, I kind of feel bad for poor X. He's got a lunatic for a mother, a stick man for an uncle, and really no clue what the real world is like. He just kind of exists in his sock ironed bubble. At this point, I knew it was time to go before things escalated. My darling drama digging date had provoked Uncle Chopstick enough and I just had no more time for these people. I stand up and politely said excuse me to Uncle Dearest, despite his clear fury, properly trained British people tend to break out in hives if they aren't a little polite. We leave and decide to go get fish and chips from the beachfront and have a lemon top to Mr. Whippy. We were at the point when we were just about to drive home when my phone exploded. The warrior beast was awoken by her precious boy's despair. It was basically the same as yesterday. Whores, sluts, cunts, some lovely, I'm going to destroy your worthless lives were thrown in there and and I'm going to burn your houses down. She's on an ankle monitor because of me. I've ruined her precious little boy's life. I'm an evil harpy from hell and the most delightful, I hope cancer kills you. Then she said the one thing that really made me see red. She said she hopes my nephew dies. WTF? I saw red. If brunette hadn't been with me, I'd have gone to her house and made a necklace out of her teeth. After some soothing words from B, I called the lovely boy in blue that I'd spoken to the previous day, explained what was going on, and decided, despite the overall exhaustion, that I now wanted to press charges for harassment. He came by once we were back at my place, went through my phone, diddled with some stuff, and said I'd have to come into the station on Monday to do other stuff I'm not quite clear about. Hopefully this is all over? She's got the police after her, X knows I'm over him, him, what more is there to be done? As for me and B, you might ask, I'm not sure. It depends on how much drama her soul needs to survive. If she is someone that creates it to fulfill their own daily drama doses, she'll be gone. But for now, she's currently in the living room cuddling my cat. So I'll let you know how things go. Aw, adorable. I'm so glad OP decided to press further charges. That is what I wanted. It's just this week, bitches. But anyways, <laughs> that is all for me today. I hope you enjoyed this entitled people story. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I truly appreciate when you do, and I will see you in the next Reddit story. Bye. No, Luna.